the grace of God, you see the devil from a distance. And the devil free from you. Why? Because you are that child of God. God plants in our hearts a burning desire to know truth and to do good. Only God the Father satisfies the desires of his children. Who is going to satisfy your desire? The Father initiates the wake of grace by giving us his only begotten son to come and die for you and I. The grace of God is given to us freely as our freedom is perfected at that time also our longings are fulfilled. You know how we long for things upon the face of the earth? The more you know him, the more you long for him. How many of us before you go to bed to sleep, you, you pray. Or we just hit the bed because it's time to sleep. How many of us, before you wake up, you pray. How many of us, before you drive, going somewhere, you ask God, please, Lord, may your grace cover me. How many of us, before you make a decision, you pray. Or you just depend on your mind. You see, why are so many people these days, they make dumb and foolish decisions? It's because they don't hear God, they hear themselves. And they hear other people telling them. There is wisdom through the counsel of the Lord. Amen. There is distraction in the counsel of this world. Because the counsel of this world, when they counsel you, they always bring, belittle you and humiliate you. And it shows you, you know, you're doing this and this will make you more weak. If you do something like that, it will show you weaker. You're being taken advantage. As a child of God, you're not taking advantage. As a child of God, you're increasing. Now, imagine if Jesus would have said, for me to go upon the face of the earth, this is a bunch of rebellious people. I saw what happened on Adam. You know, look the way how this woman, Eve, just completely turned him upside down together with the snake. Jesus said, I'm going. Him, the Bible says, him who you know sin became sin in order that we should be made righteous. Sometimes we are Christians, but we don't understand what makes us to be strong. What makes a Christian to be strong is not how powerful you are. It's how much you know God. Amen. 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 As a child of God, we don't pump ways. As a child of God, we grow the inner man. The spirit man, that man in us, as we feed him, we grow. But in this world today, everyone wants to be martial. I remember when I was young, I wanted to be martial. I did everything. Go learn how to do kung fu. Do this and that. Go shadow boxing. Hit the walls. Do this and that. Throw punches. I wanted to be strong. But when I became a Christian, I realized that was nothing but vain. What is can any prophet man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What can any prophet man, the more you're closer to God, the more you become greater in the things of God. What attracts people to men and women of God is not because they're handsome and beautiful or they're rich, it's because of Christ inside of them. What will attract God to you, to people to you, is the God inside you. A lot of people they ask me a question, why do people love you? They love the God that is inside me. Amen? Amen? If I don't have God, they'll never love the devil inside. If you find the people that are running away from you, you must know that there's something there that people that are running away from. So, get Christianity is every hour, every second, every breath. Amen? Amen. Christianity is high mind on Sunday. Oh, praise the Lord. I truly have glory to God. I look good. I'm going to change. I'm going to speak the language. I 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Especially Pentecostals. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, we used to see something. How you I'm blessed. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you look at a person who says, I'm blessed. He's completely in a different kind of a world. How you doing? I'm blessed. Like one sister, we used to come to a church. How you doing, sister? I'm blessed. I can't complain. Two weeks later, I check her out. Where is that sister? She ran away. The one who is blessed ran away. Because she was blessed from the outside, not from the inside. How many people there in torment? They use the term terminology to please people instead of pleasing God. Romans chapter 3, verses 9 to 19. I use this scripture. So that we understand where we are. What shall we conclude then? Do we have an inner advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the ch charge. The Jews and the Gentiles are alike. Are all under the power of what? Sin. Verse 10. As it is written, there is no one righteousness. I love that part. There is no one what? Righteous. No one what? So there's no one righteous, not even one. Man, that's a serious. Not even one. That's right. Who makes someone to tremble? Not even one. There is no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves, their tongues perhaps deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. You know, a child of God, I hear some Christians in a little bit, you know, they sneak in some curse way that I, I look at you and say something. It's not all right. When a child of God, you sneak in some curse language, and they will be speaking, you know, David, that's this and that. Like, hmm, I can't collect you. Where does that come from? <laughs> the Lord that is inside you, the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When you kiss, that's what is inside you. There's no way. You, then they use the word, excuse my French, to what? You know it's not your French, it's who you are. <laughs> Amen. Excuse my French. And then they go bleep, bleep, bleep. That's not the French, it's the real you. And the real, we are just seeing the real you. Now, let me encourage you, children of God, when you you're sitting close to a person who is cursing, just even frown to show that that's nasty. That is real bad. If a person says a curse word, just frown. <laughs> you know, don't tell them it's bad. Just look at them. So. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Then they will realize, what did I just say? They will stop. Now what happens is that sometimes when people they kiss us children of God, we also laugh and say, yeah, well, you know, I'm also human, you know. The, the person realizes, well, even the person who's supposed to be alive does the same, so there's nothing wrong. Let's continue kissing. Amen. Their feet are swift to shed blood, lowing their misery. Mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable. Why do we need grace or the merit or the favor of God? Merit is defined, the word merit is defined as something odd for our good deeds. Merit is 
defined as something odd for our good deeds. The whole truth is that God does not owe us anything. Since everything we have is pure gift from Him. Who can say God owes me anything? God doesn't owe you and that. We owe God everything. However, in God's wisdom and the infinite love, we have been brought into the wake of the divine grace through our cooperation with that grace. The Father bestows true merit on us, granting us eternal life through Christ Jesus. The grace of God is there to change us completely. The Father bestows true merit on us, granting us the eternal life through Christ Jesus. Paul pictures a man as sinner in the sight of God. Paul, whenever you're speaking, he pictured men nothing but filth raised, wicked, a sinner, a person of God. Our whole being is filled with the fruits of sin. That's why we find it difficult to forgive. There are some people, you wrong them, you better as well just say goodbye. Because they will haunt you, they will never forgive you, they will never, they will smile, but they will never appreciate you. That whatever you do, you know, it just takes them off. Some people, you know, you just step on their feet, you are done. As far as they are concerned, you are dead. Rest, you might as well ride on yourself, rest in peace. <laughs> you know, you are gone. Where is Christ? 